Hi, Rocky Ward with the Hitting Guru. Um, I'm going to try to do about a 15-minute demo to show you what the system's about. Um, as you can tell, this is uh, there are four screens here. We have the option to go to a single screen, two screens, three screens, or four screens. What I'll do right now is we'll start with four so I can show what we can fit into each of these boxes. Normally when we use the system, we only use two or three screens. That way we have, we're able to see um, the information in a larger format. The screen in the upper right, right here around where the cursor is, is what we call our COM. It's the center of mass. If you look at the white ball, that more or less represents where the body weight is, or the center of the mass, or somewhere around the belly button of the hitter. In particular, when you look at the feet, this hitter is an open stance hitter. It shows uh, the open stance with the feet. Um, and, uh, and again, this is uh, uh, a left-handed hitter, so you kind of have to rotate it. Um, but as we move, and I'll explain the bar on the bottom um, right now while we're at it, I can click on that bar and I can move it and move the hitter through his sequence. I can stop it, write an impact if I want. I can stop it anywhere I want to. But in an effort to show you the calm, this does two things. This hitter has 59% of his weight on his front foot. He's the front-loaded hitter. And so we can see the ball is on this side of the screen and it shows that it's on his front foot. Um, and as we move through the swing, you'll see that the weight transfers. He moves it back onto his left leg at this point to 60%. And so you can see the ball transfer to his left foot. And as we move through, it comes back to 65% at impact and extension. So we're able to track his weight transfer uh, uh, between his feet. We're also able to track uh, that is on the x-axis. And for those of you that remember geometry, the x-axis is this one. Uh, the y-axis is the one up and down. The one up and down, uh, the camera tells us and the software tells us what, how much weight is on the heels of the feet or how much weight is on the balls of the feet. In this case, he's got a lot of weight on the balls of his feet. This is towards his toe and towards his heel. So as we start, this hitter has a lot of weight on his toes, then drops as he um, finishes his stride, he has equal weight basically between his arches and he never does go below the x-axis so he never does get any weight onto his heels and then back up onto his toes a little bit. And in reality when we evaluate this chart we kind of like to, we would like to see the ball start go back and forward in a direct line. The closer this is to a direct line the better off we are. The blue and the yellow and the red, the blue represents the load or the initial phase of the hitting. Um, the yellow represents the uh, launch and the red uh, represents the, the uh, impact and the finish. It also measures the distance between the feet throughout the swing so you can know how much distance there is in the, uh, in the feet. So this is a pretty neat um, way to use. You know, you, pretty neat chart to show a kid his weight transfer and how much uh, balance he has. When we, we talk toe to heel, we talk and discuss that as base balance. Um, and then left to right is, is more talked about from the standpoint of weight transfer. Um, the next chart I'm going to show you is in the lower right. This is kind of our chart for the kinetic, uh, uh, kinetic flow uh, of the hitter. Um, so it connects all the different parts. And while I've got an opportunity, let me explain this real quick. The numbers on this chart and the numbers down here reflect different specific parts of the swing that are measured. One is the stance, as we can see right here. Two, if I want to, I can just click on the number two and it goes to his load. This is where he reaches his furthest back point um, of the swing for his load. Three is at the point where the front foot touches down or our front foot touch or front foot land. Four is the launch, which is the initial move 
movement of the body and the hands in a rotation to the ball. Five is impact uh, uh, with the baseball. Six is extension. So we can click on these numbers and go specifically to parts of the swing. Now let's go back to the chart in the lower right. Um, we start the hitter, and as we move through, the red line represents the hip position uh, in relation. Of course, when we start with a stance, we have a baseline of the hips at zero. Um, and then the green line represents the head position. Um, as he moves forward, you see the hips raise two inches above the starting point. His head actually drops two inches. Uh, and as we move along, his head continues to rise. This is a problem with this particular hitter, is the fact that he uh, hits on the rise, so to speak. So you see a, a, a slight increase in both head and hips away from the ball. Now, I don't want to get into the hitting philosophy, and that's the beauty of our system, is that we show you what the, the metrics tell us. Um, we don't necessarily tell you what to do as a coach, uh, but we show you the metrics. You can decide what's important. Uh, with that said, I'll move to the next chart where we do kind of tell you, uh, and that is the global score. What we've done is we've set a certain set of parameters for different stages in the swing. In this particular case, let me take the hitter back to start. In this particular case, um, the computer has analyzed this hitter and says that he's about 56% perfect. Again, these numbers are a set of parameters that have been established by our staff uh, through years of experience and study that give us a good baseline for where the hitter is with mechanics. These parameters were developed based on a fastball thrown right down the middle for the base mechanic. Uh, those of you that are good experienced coaches understand that pitches thrown inside or outside need to be accessed a little differently. Uh, and a kid that's 6'6", six, six, or a kid that's 5'6", or a kid 100 pounds, or 200 pounds, or a 12-year-old, or 22-year-old, are all going to be a little bit different. Um, so the effort here was to take all of those parameters, put them, or all those metrics, put them into a nice little tidy package where we can evaluate almost every base. Um, uh, every base mechanic of the hitter. This hitter scored 56 uh, percent. That's a total global, global score of all the parts that we measure, and I'll show you those in just a second. We can then go to performance by clicking on the tab, and at the first stage or the stance of the hitter, uh, we measure five specific things. Spine bend is the bend of the waist, and I won't go and explain all of this, but it gives you an idea. Uh, when we look at this form, at stance, his weight transfer and his spine bend are within the parameters. When you look at the little bar chart, uh, the black area is good, the red area is bad. For balance, front knee bend and front knee position, uh, he's, it shows up as yellow because he's slightly outside the parameters. Not a severe fault, a uh, severe area of error, but it's an area that can be fixed. When we go to the part two, um, which is the load of the hitter in this particular case. His load score is 20. His shoulder tilt's good. Uh, he doesn't fault on that. He faulted on weight transfer mainly because um, there was too too much transfer back is, is the idea. Again, this is a front load hitter. Starts with a lot of weight on the front, moves a lot of weight back. Um, that is faulted because certain hitters uh, can't, if they, if they have too much load and transfer, they can't get it back. Balance, uh, he's faulted because he's got a little bit too much weight up on his toes. And then the X factor is kind of a golf term. But basically what it means is that when the hips start rotation and the shoulders start rotation, they should be separate. So the concept in baseball is the hips rotate while the shoulders stay square. The shoulders, as we get to launch, which is later on, uh, we call it something different there. We call it coil. Um, the, the, the shoulders then come back in line with the hips when we finish the swing. It's basically a way to uh, describe the coordination between the lower body and the upper body. Uh, but in this particular phase, uh, a case, he's severely outside of the parameters. Uh, 
And uh, as a result, and then this is basically caused with this hitter, if you see his front shoulder, he's turned in. It's what we call inward rotation, and that's why he's being altered again. These are suggestions for the coach that he can then make a decision on what he thinks is important. He may, you know, I was saying that one coach may think that this is a major fault that I've got to fix in order to help the sitter. Another coach may believe that that's not a big deal, and, um, and he can look at other areas of the swing. So we can do that for each phase of the swing. There's the body coil rotation that we talked about that, that is about the coordination between the upper body and lower body. Shoulder tilt balance. The upper body, upper power triangle is the measurement between the elbow to elbow to knee, or to uh, belly button to elbow. Uh, it has everything to do with uh, how close the knees and elbows are to the center of the mass. It's really what it comes down to. That's what the effort is. Now, once we deal with that, uh, and I won't go through everything, but we have all of these measurements, 33 in total, and I'll show those on a chart right now, and then I'll come back to that. The chart is right here. All I did was click on this box and then click on the chart. These are all the parameters at each of the stages of hitting. So, for example, his foot width at stance, 31 inches. At launch, it's 25. At extensions, it's 27. The numbers may mean something to you. They may not mean something to you. I've coached for a long time and had an awful lot of successful hitters. Um, my teams uh, have been in the top five in the country in almost every offensive category throughout my career. But these numbers don't mean anything. Never have I told the hitter, okay, your, your stance is 31 inches and uh, at the stride and finish it needs to be right at 32.7 inches. That's not a reasonable way. But what this does is it gives us comparison numbers, gives us our balance at each of the stages, our knee width at each of the stages. So each individual coach can look at these parameters, these measurements, and decide what, how they want to use them. But these parameters uh, or these measurements or these, these uh, metrics were then used to develop the parameters over here. Uh, so I think most people We'll look at the chart occasionally, but I doubt many people would do much time teaching with it. But it's nice to have. You could have, we could have just taken this and put it in the back office and not worried about it at all, but we didn't. Uh, we wanted people to have the information that the camera is able to provide. And keep in mind that if I took uh, a Mike Trout uh, or any major league player and put him on our system, he would have his own set of parameters that would be developed. It doesn't matter who it is. Um, and uh, in the future of this particular program, we'll be able to develop modules. Um, the first thought you know, uh, that we have for modules is this, is a, this system as it stands uh, analyzes the basic hitter. But if I want to train a hitter to hit for more power, that's a different set of parameters. And we can change those and, and develop a module for that. Or if we want to teach a hitter to hit and run or hit the breaking ball. Or if eventually someday we want to ask Mike Trout or a major league player uh, uh, to get on the system and develop his own parameters, then uh, we might have a Mike Trout module. If, if uh, an eight-year-old kid wants to try to hit like Mike Trout, then good luck with that. He's not, he didn't have that physical capability in most cases. But it's an interesting concept, and it's possible uh, in the future of the program. Now we go back over to here, and the third tab are fault. This is where um, uh, we show the uh, hitter what he faulted and, and basically what it means. In this particular case, uh, let's say the front knee is too bent. This is the fault that he was provided. I can click on this read more. What will happen is it will go directly to our academy as long as the computer has internet access and it will um, show you videos that we've developed that give you drills. This particular video is, is uh, filmed by Gary Ward, Hall of Fame Division I coach, um, and it discusses uh, front muscle systems, which is uh, tied to the front knee bend. This video uh, is a set of catch drills that we've used to help hitters understand how to pause that one, uh, how to uh, uh, feel what the body position would be. This is me 
uh, in a three-minute video that the players have access to just with a click of a button. Coaches have access if they want to. We envision, envision in the future that as uh, hitting guru continues to develop, that there will be other coaches out there, quality, uh, highly respected coaches that will uh, maybe develop their own drills and, and have them available on the academy. Uh, so we'll go back to the system, so that gives us direct access to the internet. Now, the next stage of this is that I'm going to show you the 3D swings. I've shown you all the charts and information, but now we're going to show you how we can train with this. This is a 3D image. See, it matches the 2D image. But I can click on each of these, and I can fit a hitter and show his uh, view from the picture. Uh, view from the catcher and the overhand overside view. Keep in mind that the system uses a 3D camera, one single camera that's placed directly across the bat the, in the other batter's box of the hitter, and it collects all of this information. Uh, as we look through the swing, uh, neat little thing we have here, we can make it uh, replay at whatever speed. Full speed, replay, uh, 50%. Replay, or you could uh, you could go to full speed slow mo. You can stop it wherever you want to. You can grab the bar and move it. The beauty of this is is from each angle with one camera, without having to take multiple cameras uh, in a full setup, I can look at a lot of different things. So the over top view here in the lower right gives us a pretty good chance to see what his hands do and what his hand path is. We see this hitter pretty severely wraps and bars his lead arm. Again, uh, that is a power set that reduces, the generally in philosophy, reduces the ability to make contact. Um, but again, it's up to each individual process to see what is important. So we can look at all these views. I can look at his body position from the catcher's view. I can look at his body position from the pitcher's view. In this particular view, you can see uh, where the hip is, is, is lifted up and the front shoulder is lifted up and the barrel starting to come underneath. Um, and uh, we can make our own assessments. Now the other thing that we're able to do with the system, and I'll start moving a little bit quicker at this point, is we can establish markers. This is uh, anybody that's used the right view pro system or any of the systems out there that are um, 2D systems, they all have drawing things. I can take a, a line and I can draw a line between the knee and the hip and the back shoulder uh, and show what the um, what those angles are. Uh, I can erase that if I want. But our marker systems need. We don't have to draw ahead of time. We can reset these or click on them. So I want to just see the front side on the front view. The right hitter, I want to see his head position and maybe his back foot position. Uh, from the pitcher's view, I want to uh, be able to see head position and, and knee position. And I just click on these, these markers, and the last one, let's look at head and shoulders. Uh, and now these markers automatically show up. They are set at the hitter stance, so the, the bar is right on top of the head, back hip, back foot, uh, front foot here. There are the markers of the shoulders and the hands, and we can see how they relate. I know that I've used some of these systems in the past in coaching, and one of the frustrating things about it is that I spent a lot of time putting all these markers in uh, instead of teaching my, hit, my kid how to hit. Um, so this kind of gives you what the, what the 3D views are. Again, we can go back and, and uh, look at uh, bigger pictures. Uh, you can connect the system to any size of monitor. If you want to buy a big 65-inch monitor, put it on a TV card, you can. Uh, our system, the way it is at this point, comes with the uh, Alpha computer, which is a high-level uh, computer. It has one terabyte of hard drive space. It's an i7 processor, uh, and it has a very high-level graphics card, so it runs our system almost, you know, basically, seamlessly. Uh, keep in mind that any one of these captures is a um, uh, tons and tons and tons of of information in one single uh, capture. It's a pretty complex uh, system from the standpoint of computers. And for those guys that are not real computer guys, don't understand some of that stuff, don't worry about it. Bottom line is the computer works with the system, comes with a keyboard, mouse, the sound, 
It uh, comes with a cart that you're able to um, uh, put the system on. It comes with the Connect camera. Everything you need out of the box in order to run the system. Now, what we don't, we do offer uh, monitors. That most of you have a TV monitor. You can use a uh, computer TV, a computer monitor that you're using with your desktop. You can use any uh, monitor that you want to. Uh, and so we don't get into that a whole lot. Some people may want a 30-inch monitor. Some people want a 60-inch monitor, and those are fairly uh, inexpensive. I know I bought uh, a 32-inch TV for about $160 the other day, and it's you know that same TV a few years ago was ridiculous, you know, a thousand bucks, stuff like that. Uh, we can pro we can provide that for you in the pricing if you want to. That's all up to you. So that's kind of open-ended. Let me now go back. Uh, to the four system. I'm going to show you um, each of the views and how we, what we can do within, um, within our academy. So right now I can work with the hitter. He can take a swing. Uh, I can set the system up uh, to immediately after the swing replay so the hitter can take a swing, look at the computer monitor, and watch the full replay of whatever I decide to put up on the screen for him. We can do some teaching, and then we go back and we do another swing. We can also, um, if we want to, we can have it not do a replay and just capture swings. So a kid can swing the bat. We capture the swing. Computer saves it. Takes three to five seconds for that to happen, and then he's ready to. Then computer will give a audible sound a beep to tell the hitter and the coach that it's ready for the next capture. And you can sit and, and uh, uh, capture 10 swings, save them into the computer, and then they can be analyzed later. One of the real cool things, though, that we're able to do is we're able to do what's called the screen cap. It's up here in the top. And by clicking on the screen cap, we're able to uh, pretty much tape what's on uh, the screen. So it saves that to a file. I can decide to save it only, upload it only, or save and upload. What's that mean? In this case, I'm going to save and upload. What this is going to do is going to take that action or that picture of the screen. It's going to put it on a file on my computer, in which I can then attach to an email, send to a coach player, or send to a coach, send it to myself. I can send it to um, uh, the player for review later. Uh, and it also uploads it to the Academy. Uh, that's how long it takes, about 10 seconds or so. I can open it in, the, in a browser, and there's the video that we just did. I can double click on it. And uh, the, this is what the kid can get in his email. He can review the swing. I can use this bar, and I cannot manipulate these screens up here, but he can use the slide bar in order to look at his swing. And we have the markers that are in place, so we can look at how he, is, it, it, how he is in relation to the markers. So that can be emailed to anybody, uh, and uh, it can be used at any time. That's one. The second thing uh, is that when we set up this particular header, and we'll go down to him, just bear with me, and we, if we have a new header, in fact, let me go ahead and do that. We have a new player, so we have... Uh, Joe Smith, and then we uh, are able to put his uh, email in. So it was Joe just G at JS at Yahoo.com. At this point, he's a man or woman because this is a system designed for both baseball and softball, right or left handed. The rest of it is, is just for information. If you want to put in their address and birthday and all that stuff, you can, but you don't have to. Uh, at this stage, so this is a brand new hitter that's on the system. You put his name, you put his email in, you then create an account and click submit. And when I click submit, that will send an email to the player uh, in which we'll provide a link to our academy. He'll click on that um, and be able to go set up a, uh, uh, a password and ID where he can have access to any of the swings that we decide as a coach or whoever the operator is. Uh, uh, to upload to the Academy. So in theory, we're going to go back uh, and get him back in, go to the library, pull up one of these swings. In theory, 
uh, what we can do is we can screencast and upload and um, within a matter of 30 seconds, this particular swing will be in the player's academy. So if I have a player that takes 10 swings in the batting cage and we want to allow the kid to have his, uh, his iPhone or his smartphone with him, uh, he takes 10 swings at the batting cage. We can screencast five of those that automatically go up to the academy. And when he comes out of the batting cage, he can immediately access all of those swings on his phone or on an iPad or if you want to as a coach, set a uh, computer up uh, to the side that has that access. He puts his code in there and he can access and look at his swing. And then he can come back in uh, to the batting cage have, after having looked at those. There are lots of different ways that this, this can be used. The next uh, uh, thing that we can do is a little bit more advanced. Instead of just the screencast that shows what's on the screen only and only does one swing, uh, we'll cancel that. We can do a record a lesson where at this point now what the system is doing is it is recording my voice. It's recording the, everything on the swing. So I can show the hitter, say, OK, I want to show him all these uh, a full swing at full or at half speed. I want to show him um, at full weight, at full speed. I want to go because I want this guy to see his, uh, uh, his uh, center of mass. I can do a swing showing that. I want him to know what his score is. I can put that in. Um, and so this gives him his score. We can put the performance up or the faults up. Uh, I can then say, OK, uh, Garrett, uh, at your, your knees, uh, front knees too far outside, um, uh, which is basically the knee position in comparison to his front foot. Uh, we would like it to be a little bit more inside the arch of the foot. Uh, you go to the second stage, it shows other faults, um, and you can go through each of the faults. So once I do this, uh, and as you notice, as I clicked on the buttons, it took, it took the, the 2D and the 3D frame to those specific parts of the swing that you can look at. Say, OK, uh, body's too cold. There's too much rotation in comparison to the shoulders. Um, uh, and he can, he can do all of this stuff. And when I'm done with this, I then click End Lesson. Everything I just did in the last minute and a half uh, can then be saved to sent by email or uploaded to the Academy so he can access uh, the account from the Academy. In this case, I'll cancel the lesson. One last thing I want to show, there's still more cool stuff that this thing does. But one thing you can do, um, is do a side-by-side -side view. So I can click two of the swings from this hitter. So we can click uh, two swings from the same hitter, put them side-by-side, -side, and we can run them side-by-side. -side. Of course, I went, well, no, that's two different, uh, actually two different swings. Um, and so we can analyze uh, if we, you know, we, we take a hitter and we work with him collect the swing, work with him for 20 pitches, collect another swing, and then we can show the hitter side by side uh, what we want. We can adjust this in order to put it in timing with the, the other swing so that they're uh, uh, correlated. We can start and stop. Uh, we can see the difference between the two different swings. You can also go and take any hitter that's in your system, pull him up, and do a side by side comparison. So if we did have a uh, Mike Trout or somebody like that that we had a uh, capture for, we could put him in there and do a comparison side by side with any hitter. So as you can tell, this thing does an awful lot. This can be used. Uh, we're, you know, we're continuing to, to deal with development. A um, couple things to point out as well is that we have a timer down here. Um, this, If we want to know what the time to impact is, so we stop it at stride, and then we finish it at impact. All right, um, may need to move back a little bit. Okay, so impact, they got out of sync a bit. Um, we can subtract these two numbers to get a time to impact. Now, uh, one of our newest releases that will be coming out relatively soon uh, will actually give us that number. It'll show up in this uh, 
trying to get out of that. Um, It'll show up uh, in one of these charts where it'll have time to impact. Uh, we also are working on uh, an exit velocity that can be uh, put into the system so that not very far from now, not only will we have all this cool stuff, we'll obviously have, uh, also have time to impact and we'll have exit velocity so that we can compare. In reality, you can take two hitters that score exactly the same but based on their physical body type, how quick they are to the ball, uh, and uh, what kind of hand strength and bat speeds they have uh, that will impact the time to impact. So you have two guys that score 57 on a global score are not the same two hitters. Uh, when we add these other two measurements, then we'll be able to start to differentiate between uh, two kids with the same mechanics. One kid has better time to impact, or one kid has better exit velocity, and we start separating players and then our global score becomes a pretty good evaluative system for your players. So I hope I've covered everything today. Um, it's, uh, the hitting guru is out and uh, ready uh, uh, to launch. Um, our website will give you uh, impact at any time anybody wants to do uh, their own personal go-to meeting. We can set that up. It's very, very simple. Uh, where we send you an email, you click on the link, and I can give you a personal, or one of our other members of our staff can give you a personal uh, demonstration and answer any questions you might have. Thanks for your time.